Hello, God bless you. Uh, this is going to be uh, chapter 3 on uh, my maximized manhood um, study that I'm going through. You know, like I said in the last video, you know, we've been teaching this at my church for the past couple months. And now I'm I'm bringing it here to uh, my YouTube channel and my men's group on Facebook. Because uh, more men need to hear this. This is a great book. You know, like I showed you guys last time, Maximize Manhood by... Ed, Ed Lew, Edwin Lewis Cole, great book. Um, it, it, I, I I strongly recommend you guys buy this book and read it, you know, over and over. You can get it on Amazon and the workbook for about 22 bucks. Uh, tonight I'm going to be going over Chapter 3. And uh, Chapter 3 was called The Playboy Problem. The Playboy Problem. I'm going to get right into it because I don't, like I said last video, I don't like to uh, waste too much time. And have extremely extremely long videos at the ranch i can speak for an hour easy but i try to keep it around 30 minutes on these my first video was 34 minutes so um we're gonna get right into it it's called the playboy problem in this book uh the maximized uh, maximized manhood and it starts off talking about sins versus problems you know um unfortunately today you know People, a lot of people have an issue with the word sin. Unfortunately, a lot of believers, a lot of Christians don't don't want to. Um, they don't want to acknowledge the word sin. They want to belittle it. They want to downgrade it. Um, they to justify their sin, and uh, it's like sins versus problems. You know, when I first went over this chapter in last year, when I was teaching it, um, also at the ranch, um, I came across a song on YouTube that went really, really well. Um, by Usher, you know, I grew up, you know, I was born in 1983, I, I went through the 90s R&B, that's my, uh, that's my era, I guess you can say, and I, I love 90s R&B, and you know, Usher, you know, he's, he's been around since the 90s, and he's, he's evolved with the times, he's still relevant in today's, uh, you know, R&B, even though it's different, and he had a song called Bad Habits, and, um, that, that's, a uh, that's something that, you know, a lot of, uh, Believers, unfortunately, um, they like to say, "Oh, I just have bad habits," and you know, and it's it's you know, it's it's sin, you know, it's sin, and we can't downgrade it, we can't belittle it. Sin is sin, like I said last one, sin is sin, no matter how you spell it. Um, you know, sin is sin. It's not just a bad habit. It's not just a problem. It's not just an issue. It's serious, and sin is sin. See, we have psychologized the gospel and eliminated the word sin from our vocabulary. Now, we don't talk about sin. We talk about problems, you know. A lot of people, they, they like I'm, I'm beating like a dead horse right now. Um, we, a lot of people don't like to talk about sin, you know. They, they just want to talk about problems, and in doing so, what they're trying to do is they're trying to justify their sin. Just calling it a problem is more convenient than calling it what it is, sin. See, a lot of people are looking for sympathy, um, or understanding. You know, we, they just want sympathy. They want to be understood, um, you know, or even professional help. Um, you know, people are just l looking for ways to, you know, belittle it and downgrade it and not really call it what it is. If you look at uh, Psalms 32 verses 3 through 5, it says, For when I kept silent, my bones wasted away through my groaning all day long. For day and night your hand was heavy upon me. My strength was dried up as by the heat of summer. I acknowledged my sin to you, and I did not cover my iniquity. I said, I will confess my transgressions to the Lord, and you forgave the iniquity of my sins. That was Psalms chapter 32, verses 3 through 5. He starts off by saying, for when I kept silent, my bones wasted away. And then it ends with, I acknowledged my sin to you, and I did not cover my iniquity. I said, I will confess my transgressions to the Lord, and you forgave the iniquity of my sin. See, we can't be covering things up. We can't be downgrading things. We have to confess. We have to confess. If you look at Proverbs 28, 13, it says, whoever conceals his transgressions will not prosper. Very, very point blank. Whoever conceals his transgressions will not prosper, but he who confesses and forsakes them will obtain mercy. That is Proverbs chapter 28, verse 13. Like I said last time, uh, write these down, read them for yourself, uh, because I'm going to be moving through them to keep these videos at a, at a reasonable time. 
Whoever conceals his transgressions will not prosper, but he who confesses and forsakes them will obtain mercy. Proverbs chapter 28 verse 13. So we can't be concealing our, our, our sin. We can't be trying to cover it up. If we do, we will not prosper. We must confess and forsake and we will obtain mercy. Um, sin, on the other hand, it, it has to be repented. Sin has to be repented. Um, confessed and forsaken you know we you know prob problems calling it a problem is more convenient um calling it a, a bad habit is more convenient but sin it has to be repented confessed and forsaken we need to confront our sin confront our sin too many believers do not want to confront their sin they just want to cover it up they want to turn a blind eye um they want you know even churches want to turn a blind eye to what they know is going on and we must not do that. We must not do that. That's what this whole chapter is about. We must confront our sin. In First John 1, 9, it says, If we confess our sins, He is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighte unrighteousness if we confess our sins. That's First John chapter 1, verse 9. Don't get John mixed up with First John, you know, because it's Matthew, Mark, Luke, John, then farther down the Old Testament, the New Testament, it's First John. First John 1, 9. See, all problems in life are somehow based on sin. All problems in life are somehow based on sin. If we go to Psalms, chapter 107, verse 17, it says, Some were fools through their sinful ways, and because of their iniquities, suffered affliction. Some were fools through their sinful ways. And because of their iniquities, suffered affliction. See, all problems in life are somehow based on sin. If we also go to 1 John, again, 1 John chapter 5, verse 17 says, All wrongdoing is sin. All wrongdoing is sin, but there is sin that does not lead to death. But all wrongdoing is sin. First John chapter 5, verse 17. See, unfortunately, we have a lot of churches that are being laxed on discipline. You know, um, a lot of churches turning the blind eye, you know. Um, I'm not calling out churches by name. I'm saying a lot of churches, you know. I'm not... I'm not uh, pointing fingers. I'm saying a lot of churches. This goes on everywhere. Um, one thing about me and my channel and my 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 group, you know, my videos and whatever, um, every time I feel like maybe I shouldn't say this, hey, I don't want to offend nobody. That just tells me, no. Nah, then you need to say it because if 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 I'm worried about offending people, then then I'm missing the point. If, and if people are getting offended then you know that's on them that's on them you know if the shoe fits wear it um you know that's the whole point that's the whole point i had to confront my sin you know i had to confront my sin we all have to confront our sin and we all have to be open to hearing these things um that that's the whole point of this chapter that's the whole point of this book that's the whole point of what i what i speak about every time i feel like ooh you know maybe i shouldn't say that that just tells me no, that just means you should, Sam. And I say everything in love, but we got to we can't, you know, people take the word love and they they feel like, well, love means not speaking the truth. No, you can speak the truth in love. So if anyone ever takes me wrong, I mean, there's nothing much I can do about that. I don't I don't I hear myself. I I don't I don't say it coming from a judgmental um, point of view because like I always say when I speak I'm always speaking to myself first when I speak at the ranch when I speak everywhere I'm always I always say I'm speaking to myself first you know I'm I'm talking to myself first see um, unfortunately we have a lot of churches who are laxed on sin and discipline they don't want to talk about it you know they don't want to talk about sin they don't want to tell people this and that because then they'll stop coming, they'll stop paying their tithes, they'll stop doing this and attendance will be low and 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 in, in doing so they, they sugarcoat, they water down and when they, you just tell people every Sunday that they're good and they're great and they're a good person, people begin to become comfortable, lazy, relaxed, complacent and through that we see the double mind, we see the double mind come. Like we that is talked about in James chapter one verse eight, and that's why you know we see a a, a huge issue with double-minded believers nowadays, because preachers, pastors, 
are not speaking the truth from the pulpit because they don't want to ruffle no feathers. And anybody who knows my father knows that yeah, he ruffled feathers. And so every time I feel like I shouldn't say something, I, I know then I, that, that I should. Don't don't ever take me wrong is what I'm trying to get at. Um, because I'm always talking to myself first. Unfortunately, we have a lot of believers who are relaxed on sin and uh, discipline. And we see this habitual pattern of sin, uh, practicing of sin. You know, we're all sinners. We all fall short. Um, but there's a difference when you habitually practice sin and you see nothing wrong with it and you don't see no reason to change and confess and forsake. Um, in 1 Corinthians 5.11, it says, But now I am writing to you not to associate with anyone who bears the name of brother if he is guilty of sexual immorality or greed or is an idolater, reviler, drunkard, or swindler, not even to eat with such a one. Now, in 1 Corinthians 5.11, it's talking about do not fellowship. Now, that sounds very harsh, right? He says, but now I am writing to you. Paul says, now I am writing to you not to associate with anyone who bears the name brother if he is guilty of sexual immorality or greed or is an idolater, reviler, drunkard, or swindler, not even to eat with such a one. 1 Corinthians 5.11. Now, that sounds very harsh. That sounds hateful. What do you mean not to even eat with such a one, to not associate with them? Wow, that's not love, brother. But it's actually an act of love. It's actually an act of love because, see, what he's talking about here is the practicing of sin with no confrontation, which gives no reason for change. We all are sinners. We all sin every day. What Paul is talking about here is the practice of sin. Someone who intentionally practices sin sees no wrong in it has no reason or, or has no um what's the word has no um motivation to change that's what he's talking about and when you just accept someone for what they're doing and are and are too worried about confronting it that's actually not love you're not you're not loving them you're not showing them love by just accepting and tolerating it because now they have no reason for to change because they're just being accepted why change if everyone just accepts you in the name of love, I'm not talking about kicking someone out of a church because you find out they're they're doing this or that. It's about hey, you know what, you know what is wrong, you know, and encouraging a brother and trying to disciple a brother and and, and um, trying to help them through it. But when we just accept it, turn a blind eye, um, act like act like we didn't hear that act like we didn't see that act like we didn't don't know what's going on we're not showing love that's not love at all that that's actually that's um hating your brother by not loving them enough to tell them the truth so while 1 Corinthians 5:11 may sound harsh that's not what Paul is talking about it's not an act of hate it's actually an act of love see why change why would someone feel the need to change if everyone just accepts them in the name of love. Now, um, 2 Corinthians uh, chapter 7, 9 through 10 says, As it is, I rejoice, not because you were grieved, but because you were grieved into repenting, for you felt a godly grief, so that you suffered no loss through us. For godly grief produces a repentance that leads to salvation without regret, whereas worldly grief produces death that is second corinthians chapter 7 9 through 10 godly sorrow he's talking about godly sorrow here now human sorrow what's the difference between human sorrow and godly sorrow i go back to my original um what i said at the beginning about bad habits the us the song by usher um this song came across my uh, youtube because you know uh, I, I grew up on 90s r&b um and sometimes i, I listen to my 90s r&b uh, and Usher popped up, and it was a new song that I had never heard called Bad Habits. And I don't remember all the lyrics, but he basically says at one point in the song that he's only wrong because he got caught. He says in the song, I think it's the second verse or something, he says, Truth is, I am I was only wrong because I got caught. And he's talking about how he you know lives a promiscuous life. You know, Usher, he's an R&B singer, and we all know, you know what comes with that, you know groupies and all that stuff and life on the road and and all that and he's he we know from usher's songs you know the you know, the promiscuous life 
uh, the womanizing, uh, you know, all his songs like Confessions, you know, and, and stuff like that. And he, he's talking about in the song how, you know, he every time he thinks he's going to settle down with this girl, he gets a text from his ex and, you know, can, you know, talking about the, the typical issues that, that they go through, a man goes through, especially someone in his position who, you know, has, has women throwing themselves at him. You know, this is a men's group, you know, beyond this, we're, we're men, you know. Let's talk about it, you know, so he's talking about the life that he has and how, you know, women are always storing them himself. And he's talking about how he's he was trying to talk to his girlfriend's best friends. He slid into her DMs, her direct messages. And he says, truth is, I was only wrong because I got caught. See, that's human sorrow. He's only wrong because he got caught. No, he's wrong because he's wrong. But he's saying. I, truth is, I was only wrong because I got caught. He says something like that. I forget how he rhymed it. But that's human sorrow. You're only sorry for getting caught. But godly sorrow is sorrow for the sin. Sorrow for the sin. Sorry that we hurt God, you know. So human sorrow produces death. Um, it says in, in 2 Corinthians 7, 9-10, through 10, Paul, As it is, I rejoice, not because you were grieved, but because you were grieved into repenting. For you felt a godly grief, so that you suffered no loss through us. For godly grief produces repentance that leads to salvation without regret, whereas worldly grief produces death. So, worldly grief produces death, and, and, and godly grief produces repentance that leads to salvation without regret. So what Usher is talking about in that song, Bad Habits, is is nothing but human sorrow. He's only sorry because he got caught. And as soon as it blows over, he's going to slide into some other girl's DMs behind his girlfriend's back again. He's not truly sorry. That's the difference between godly sorrow and human sorrow. Now, we have been tricked into thinking that we have problems and not sin. You know, the world wants to say, oh, it's not it's not sin, it's just a problem. You got an issue, you got an addiction. No, we have been tricked into thinking we have problems, not sin. Been told there's good in you. There's oh there's good in you. So, you know, we got a lot of people walking around saying, Well, there's good in me. I'm a good person. You know, I have a good heart, so it doesn't matter about this or that because deep down I'm a good person. Um, but you know, the Bible says no man is good. Only only, only God, you know. And then uh Romans 3.23 says, all have sinned, all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. And the, pro and the problem with that is a lot of people, excuse me, I feel like i got to sneeze. A lot of people take that scripture, Romans 3.23, and say, oh, see, all have sinned and, and come short of the glory of God. And they take it as a way to like justify, oh, I'm not perfect. Yeah, we're not perfect, but that doesn't, it's not a license to sin. It's not a license to, to freely sin and feel no uh, godly sorrow over it. Um. The difference between human wisdom and God's wisdom, okay? Human's wisdom looks to cover up. Human's, human's wisdom always looks to cover up. I spoke last time about King David in the last video about um, Canaan land and all that, full potential. Um, King David, when he slept with Uriah's wife and got her pregnant, he, his, first, his way of dealing with it was covering it up. First, he wanted to get Uriah to come home. And sleep with his wife so that he would think he got her pregnant. And then when that didn't work, when he didn't sleep with his wife, he sent him off to get killed. He sent him off to get killed in the front lines. So human wisdom looks to cover up. You look at Adam in the garden. You know, in Genesis 3.10 it says, And he said, I heard the sound of you in the garden, and I was afraid because I was naked, and I hid myself, Adam, in the garden, uh, covering himself up. That was Genesis three ten. Uh, then you go to uh, you go to Proverbs fourteen twelve. It says there is a way that seems right to man, but its end is the way to death. See, when we, when we look at things through our eyes, we all have a way. We all have a way that seems right to us, but it's that way that ends to death. You know. We saw, like I said, it was Adam, he was covering up his nakedness. Then he wanted to shift the blame to Eve. He didn't want to take responsibility. Now, you can never maximize your potential until you have received God's wisdom. You know, there's a difference between human wisdom and God's wisdom. Human's wisdom always wants to cover up. Human wisdom always wants to hide, hide it, cover it up. You know, that's human wisdom. But you can never maximize your potential until you have received God's wisdom. You look at Deuteronomy, Deuteronomy 
uh, chapter 12, 1 and 8, and it says, chapter 12, verses 1 and verses 8, it says, These are the statutes and rules that you shall be careful to do in the land that the Lord, the God of your fathers, has given you to possess. All the days that you live on the earth, you shall not do according to all that we are doing here today. Everyone doing whatever is right in his own eyes. See, everybody wants to just do whatever is right in their own eyes. Well, we can never maximize our potential until we receive God's wisdom. And doing things and was doing what's right in our own eyes is human wisdom. That's human wisdom. It says, you shall not do according to all that we are doing here today. Everyone doing what is right in his own eyes. And like I said on the other scripture, it says, and he said, um, um, Proverbs 14, 12, there is a way that seems right to man, but its end is the way to death. And then, so human wisdom can never, you can never maximize your potential until you have received God's wisdom, not human wisdom. And human wisdom will never lead us into Canaan land. That's what this this book is all about. Maximize man, and he talks a lot about our Canaan land and how we want he, God wants us to have a Canaan land experience in all areas of our life. Human wisdom will never lead us into Canaan land. And then it closes with godly company. Godly company. You know, it's, have you ever heard of, you know, who you hang out with, you know, show me your 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 fit, your top five friends, and you know I'll, I'll show you who you hang out with, you know, and that's how you're gonna turn out. And you know I, I've heard all kinds of analogies, like if you hang out with successful people, you'll you'll turn out successful. If you hang out with with lazy lazy broke bums, you're you're most likely gonna be lazy broke too. You know um is you know what's your company? You know what's your company? There's, there's all kinds of um you know analogies on like company and you know in the world and like in, in um you know business and all that stuff and success books you know oh who you hang out with if you hang out with successful people you're going to be successful if you hang out with um unsuccessful people then you're going to be unsuccessful you know if you uh you can't uh fly with with eagles if you're you know walking around with turkeys and stuff like that you know company matters the 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 um, the people we hang out with are, are we rubbing off on them or are they rubbing off on us godly company we must have godly company in proverbs 13:20 it says whoever walks and i love these scriptures that are so point blank whoever walks with the wise becomes wise but the companion of fools will suffer harm so what you see is all these you know uh self help books all these motivational books all these books like that they just get it off from the bible and they and they use it for what they're what they're teaching what they're promoting whoever walks with the wise becomes wise you know it's that simple if you walk if you hang out with wise people you will become wise but the companion of fools will suffer harm you know so um godly company you know as as men of god as, as christian men who, what what does our company look like are we going to church on sunday but monday through saturday hanging out with the world you know and are we rubbing off on them? Are they rubbing off on us? Of course, we work in the world. We live in the world, but we're not of it. I'm not saying don't don't associate with your coworkers who who are not believers and all that stuff. I'm saying who there's a difference between, you know, who are we making time for? You know, who are we spending all our time with? Are we spending time? And there's other chapters that talk about this, and I, I always tend to want to get ahead of myself, and I don't want to get ahead of myself, but... Godly company matters, you know, godly company matters. Who we hang out with, it matters. It determines, you know, that's another uh, easy way for a believer to become a double, to, to develop a double mind um, by hanging out with someone that does not believe at all like we believe, like we're supposed to believe. And then, you know, you start to justify things and do things that don't line up with how you believe because you're you're hanging out with people who don't believe like you. So that was chapter three. Um, the Playboy problem. Um, you know, I hope that 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 chapter bless you. Um, I'm probably you know I did two videos today. I'm taking advantage of of some some free time, and uh, I'm, I look to be a, I, I I love this book, so I'm gonna be going through this book, and I I hope you guys um enjoy it out there, all you guys as you um share it. You know, 
uh, invite more men to this group. We want to grow this this group. And this isn't about church poaching. This isn't about you know. I guess it isn't. We're not rival gangs. You know, churches. Um, you know, we're not we're not rival gangs. We're supposed to be united. Um, the, the body of Christ. This isn't about church poaching. This is just a Facebook. You know, I do this on my YouTube channel, and then I upload it to my Facebook group, um, men's group. Um, so. This isn't about church poaching, so nobody should feel that way. This is just about men of God, um, you know, coming together, united, and, and, and learning together on how to be men of God um, so we can reach our full potential in Christ and maximize our manhood. So I'm going to close in prayer, and thank you guys for watching. Heavenly Father, come before you this night. God, I just want to thank you for this opportunity again, God, to be able to share these videos, um, you know, on YouTube and Facebook and I thank you, God, for all the men that listen and all the men that's gonna gonna re reach. And I pray, God, that more men come. Uh, we we all need to hear this. We all need to uh, learn about maxing our maximizing our manhood and reaching our full potential. And you, God, I thank you for all the men out there. Anybody going through anything, whatever they're going through right now, God, um, you know all the spoken prayers and unspoken prayer requests, God. Everybody going through something, struggling maybe with with uh, your plan. You know, your plan ver very rarely makes sense to us. And I know we're always going going through things, always going through storms. And your plan is always perfect, even when it doesn't make sense. So I just thank you, God, um, for everything that you're doing in our lives and everything that you're going to do through in, in our lives and through this group and all the men it's going to reach. And I just, I just can't thank you enough. In the name of Jesus, amen. God bless you. Have a great night.